Hello there, and welcome to another of the officially Devin Abridged gameplay commentaries. This time, I am playing Empire Total War using Darth Mod and playing as the Cherokee, a Native American tribe. So you can see we're starting things off here in America, as luck would have it. And I'm just checking out what we're starting off with. We've got a few units and three settlements uh, roughly in the middle of the American theater. So we're surrounded by other factions. One key faction is the 13 colonies to our east and northeast. They control lots of territory. Tree. So we'll need to try and stay on their good side to get things going since they're much bigger than us. We've also got Louisiana to the west who according to our victory conditions here we will need to invade along with most of the 13 colonies. Just in general we have to take the area around where we start so it's a pretty easy setup for what we're actually going to have to do here. We just have to make sure we do it in a very safe fashion because we are going to have various weaknesses compared to the more developed European settlers in some ways at least. To start things off we're actually at war with Spain already and they control Florida so I'm just going to gather up our forces here at Georgia so we can go down to attack them right away before anything comes of that. You'll notice by the way there's some random bagpipe music playing that's something that Darth Maul does for some reason <laughs> but uh, for future parts or future bits of footage I'm going to be turning off Darth Mod's music modification section so it'll just be the regular music at some point. Now anyway, one downside to playing as the Native Americans is you get this fun effect which stops you having any town wealth. This is one of the main r ways in which your settlements gain economic output over time. They grow town wealth which just increases their tax income for you over time. But as the Native Americans we have this effect that just stops it from actually taking place. Meaning we're going to be limited in how much we can grow economically. You can see here a brief look at our government setup. We are a monarchy right now and animism is our religion which is not going to be shared by any of our neighbours so we'll have to force it on them. We do actually have a small tech tree that we can advance down but in Empire you do need to control a university to research any technologies. So we may be able to steal a university from a European no, power at some point to see if we can get some of those techs. Anyway, we're now in turn two, and we've gathered up our little force here at Georgia, and we're going to start moving out we down towards die. Florida. Florida. Just wanted to see what the Spanish have here, and the answer is not very much. They've got some cannons Ready. and some and militia, but nothing special. We've got a mix of archers and axemen in our Arms. army, but we are going to be using the archers as if they were axemen, which I'll explain a bit more in a moment. So I'm laying siege settlement to the settlement here. Siege. It is fortified, so I'm not going to bother attacking it right now. I'll just try and see if they uh, sally out. And even if they don't, they only have two turns of supplies. As we move on, we get a classic Empire Total War region trade offer. The British want to give me Jamaica if I give them Georgia. Not such a bad trade, actually. I would take it, only having Jamaica is not very useful for a Native American faction because you can't build ships. So having islands out in the Caribbean isn't very good. <laughs> you can see there, I tried to get Scotland off them with another deal, but it wasn't going to happen. Now Louisiana declare war on me, so that's inconvenient. We're now at war along our entire western border and all of our forces are down to the southeast. It's made even worse by the fact that the Iroquois, the tribe up to the north, also declare war on me. So now all of our units are as far away as they can be from our new battlefronts. We'll just have to see what happens there. I'm going to rapidly try to recruit some new units back up in our central region. So I've lost my trade deals with them after that war's over, but we've still got a positive income, so that's good. We'll get some more units going. We didn't see the sally from Spain, but then at the end of the next turn, we do get the sally because they're out of supply. So we're going to be uh, forced to fight this battle. Or they're going to be forced to fight us, I should say. And this allows us to fight them outside of the fortifications, which will just make things a bit easier. Going to go for a nice simple formation with our archers in the front, some melee units behind them, and then a few melee units positioned far off on the flanks. One advantage the Native Americans do have is that many of their units can hide on open ground, so we can actually start outflanking the enemy and they won't even be able to see us. In fact, they may not even be able to see some of our main advance coming right towards them here. So they've got their cannons set up in front of their army. They're going to turn to face and start firing at us. The rest of their force in no particular formation. I think they're still trying to get into line. We're going to advance really rapidly and just get things started. Since we are a melee focused faction, we don't want to spend too long maneuvering and such. We just want to get into battles as quickly as possible. On this occasion though, I'm going to test these archers. From the last time I played Darth Mod, I remember that archers 
don't work. So I decided to find out if that was still the case, and indeed they don't. If you looked very carefully there, you would have seen that here in the background is where those arrows were landing, and I was firing them at the cannon crew right in front of us. So they just don't work. I think the archers fire at random rather than at targets. They just shoot, sort of scatter arrows into the sky. But that's not the case for archers controlled by the AI. And it's a very curious thing that annoyed me during my last Empire Total War campaign. But essentially the solution is to either not use archers or when you're forced to use them, just run in with the axes and use them as a melee unit because they're okay for that. So we just engage everything in melee, as you might expect. There's not much else we can do here. Just run them and hope that we win. They do have pikes on their left flank here, so they'll be the best troops for resisting our attack. But everything else, like their colonial militia, stands absolutely no chance. And while we're still in the early game, before bayonets become commonplace, we're going to have an even bigger advantage in melee. So we just wipe the enemy out. They're demoralized, and the shattered unit's going to be destroyed as well. They did have some provincial cavalry, a bit of a stronger unit here, but my my own cavalry and my numbers will allow us to overwhelm them and that's going to bring this battle to a very very rapid close that didn't last very long at all a nice early start curiously though we lost a lot more than it says the enemy killed so it's suggesting here we lost over 100 troops to friendly fire not sure if that's another result of the archers firing randomly or firing at themselves or at each other. So we'll just not trust the archers. They're not very useful anyway, and I'm sure they're getting up to no good. Overall, a good performance from our units, and that means Florida is now going to be captured for the Cherokee. We'll need to make a few adjustments. Because it is a European colonist settlement, we can't really use it as it is. You can't recruit from it. I think if you repair it up, you can recruit, but you can't then upgrade it to get better units. So what we have to do is burn everything down and rebuild the settlement as a Native American tribal settlement. We can also see here that our general, Enoli, has got two different traits that increase morale for troops. So that is perfect because morale is one of the weaknesses of our army build in general. I wanted to see if Spain would consider peace now that we have kicked them out of North America, but the answer is no. I expect they would be too humiliated to take that offer. They would rather come back and try to get Florida back one day, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Now, the problem we'll have here is public order. These guys don't want to be taken over by a Native American tribe. Well, the lower classes don't. The upper classes are very happy about it for whatever reason. I think it's because Native American tribes are a monarchy and upper classes just love monarchy monarchy so much that it doesn't really matter what it is. So <laughs> that's good, but we still need to control the lower classes. That means I need to leave a substantial portion of our force there, even while Louisianan forces appear to be approaching from the northwest. So that's a shame. I'll just have to continue oh, recruiting a new guy, army like to deal with that potential incursion. There was enough yes. tolerance in Florida for us to get five units out of the garrison to start bringing west, so I'm going to do just that, Great bringing father. four melee units and our general, leaving those bowmen behind because they're not especially useful, at least now they'll be pretty handy as garrison units since we don't need them anyway. At the start of the next turn, we're done deconstructing the town, now it's time to rebuild it. There are different types of tribal town you can build, and we're going with the hunting grounds type because this converts the population to animism, our religion, and currently they are Catholics. That will make controlling the population significantly easier. The Louisiana army is just still building up on our border, threatening to invade, and we're doing exactly the same Warriors. thing. And I started to think we have enough stuff here in our defending force that we can probably hold them off with, with just these units, especially because I still have enough income to throw a few more units into that stack. So given that, what I could do is be incredibly sneaky and bring Anoli and his warriors down towards New Orleans, the capital of Louisiana, to make a sneak attack while their main force are up there ready to attack us. The theory being that they won't have left very much behind if they're gathering up here. At the start of the next turn, we actually can't see them anymore, so they've either gone into a hidden position or they've walked back. Yes. Either way, we're, we're going to continue having a little look over the border, Comes. and we do discover that New Orleans doesn't have any military units in it. It will still have a garrison, so we can't just walk in there. 
I wasn't sure whether we should go for it because their garrison is bigger than our army. So first I just decided to take their ports, going to force their ship out to sea and stop them from trading to reduce their income. Then I decided that I probably should go ahead with this attack. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I'll just go and see what units their garrison had and see what we could do about them. They've got a pretty big advantage here, but a lot of their units are mob with low morale. So I wasn't very intimidated by this setup because if we can just get these guys into melee, they'll probably rout instantly. And actually a lot of their numbers won't count for anything. As we move on, that garrison sallies out against us, so that's perfect. The balance bar is now more even, now that we have the defender's advantage, and that advantage is going to be quite strong for us, because we can actually use our ability to ambush the enemy here. I've put all of our units in a nice hidden position in these forests, just off to the side of the middle of the battlefield, while my general and cavalry are just going to walk towards the back of the map, drawing the enemy army towards them. They do have mortars in their force who are opening fire on my general. Unfortunately for them, they don't actually have the range to hit us, so the shots are going to land short. And another thing I remember about Darth Mod is that artillery pieces will fire even if they don't have you in range when they're controlled by the AI. They just fire as far as they can and miss. So you're safe even if it looks like the enemy are firing at you in a lot of cases. Now, as expected, the enemy just advance in one long line towards my general and then get ambushed on their left flank as they encounter our men here in the forest. We're just going to charge forwards with everything we have and try and engage their left flank in melee in the hope of just wiping it out instantly before the rest of their army can support. They are running away, so that's going to lengthen our charge, and it seems to uh, sap the enthusiasm of some of our troops. We get slower and slower as we chase them. Fortunately, they're running at a snail's pace, not particularly eager to get away here, so we still catch them and get that nice rear attack. Another unit here, this time Mob, is going to face the same fate, and they're going to have a very difficult melee ahead of them. They've got the numbers on their side, but far inferior quality means that's going to do them no good. They'll soon just rout the already wavering as the fight begins. Here a more serious unit is caught, but still they're going to struggle against our troops. They will inflict casualties upon us since they're more trained soldiers, but not going to be enough to stop us. And our general and cavalry just annihilated these mob troops, killing a hundred enemies or so with their initial charge, routing everything, and very soon we can use them to attack other units as well. The last unengaged unit here, more Firelock armed citizenry, gets hit and uh, really the battle is going to be secured for us at this point. They're trying to reform while being attacked in melee, it's not going to work for them, it's just going to cause them to rout as it turns into a rear attack. And their professional troops are trying to get away also, but they've already been rear attacked by my cav who can now chase them off the field, dealing strong casualties to their best unit. That's going to spell the end of this garrison force. The results were pretty one-sided, although curiously, we still managed to lose some troops to friendly fire, even without those archers this time, so not quite sure what's causing that. It's possible that some kills inflicted by the enemy just aren't registering, or perhaps the auto-resolve at the very end of the fight, where it auto-resolves the route, was actually causing us to lose troops. Not really sure either way. We'll continue to uh, see if we can deduce what's going on as we uh, continue along. Now, we get some nice traits here for Anoli, including one that allows him to turn offensive battles into ambushes, a trait straight out of Warhammer. So that could be very useful indeed, since we do need to close to melee range in most cases as soon as possible. Still no sign of that Louisiana army. Anyway, we're going back to this siege now, where there are some survivors from that previous battle, so we actually still have to attack them to finish them off. Unfortunately, the balance bar was roughly even, so I couldn't just auto-resolve it or get them to surrender. Uh, although, in reality, their forces were completely hopeless, so all I needed to do was come down to this battlefield and run at them, also making this cavalry attack just to seal the deal, and immediately half of their force is annihilated, the other half is just going to lose in a straight-up frontal attack. They'll try and retreat, they will be utterly destroyed, and it doesn't really matter at this point because it's a settlement assault, they get deleted, whatever happens. That's the end of that. So now we have taken New Orleans from Louisiana. Their capital has fallen. That's going to be very embarrassing for them. The big problem for us is public order. There's minus 30 to public order due to resistance to foreign occupation. Normally it's minus 10, but because it's a capital, you get the extra minus 20 on top of it. 
that means it is now certain that a rebellion will occur and there's really not much we can do about that we can just start converting the place over to be a native american settlement so we can recruit things here and otherwise use the units we do already have to try and fight the rebels off and maintain control Meanwhile, I'm actually moving out up here to the north. I thought I might as well go and try to find this Louisiana army and just take it down, because I thought we'll probably have a pretty good chance, especially because it's likely to be mostly militia forces given their small size as a faction. Now, as we move on, we learn that there's been a riot down in New Orleans, and they actually killed a thousand of each other, rioting in opposition to our rule, which is very strange. These uh, colonists are so outraged about being taken over by the natives, they're actually just killing each other. Not really going to help us, but doesn't hinder us too much either, I suppose. Got a couple of units over there to add to the garrison from Florida, but still plenty of problems there. Now here's a bigger problem. The Iroquois are coming down from the north with an army. By the way, it comes to mind that Iroquois isn't how you pronounce it. I seem to remember from my previous Empire Total War series. Someone was telling me it's pronounced in some way that I don't remember at all. Perhaps I'll look it up for the next episode. Do feel free to drop that in the comments if you happen to know, and I'm still saying it wrong. Anyway, so we, I prepare to defend against the Iroquois attack. They start moving back and then start moving forward again in a confusing move. I think they were uh, recomposing their army with some new units or something. The inevitable rebellion does occur, and curiously, it's six units of Native American warriors. So it seems what was going on here is that the Louisianans, the French effectively, were ruling over a Native American tribe, and uh, the natives really liked that, and now they're outraged that we're here. Or perhaps they just want their independence back and not to be part of the Cherokee, because the tribes do hate each other, as evidenced by the current war we have right here. So anyway, we'll have to try and fight those rebels and hold them off if we can. And the same is going to be going for the invasion coming from the north, from the Iroquois. And now it's kicking off properly. Their force just marches right into our territory. I think it's clear that they are going to attack us now. They still might go back, but we do need to be prepared for it at this stage. Now as we hack into the next turn, these rebels are just going to be going around New Orleans destroying things in the outer territory. So they're not attacking us, that means we're not going to lose the territory right away by the looks of things. Now I'll have plenty of time to get some more forces together over at the settlement but still it's going to reduce its economic value. I'm not taxing it, so that's not hugely annoying in the short term. Just means I'll have to spend money in the future to repair the damage they're going to do. I've still somehow got enough income to expand my military further, so I will put some more units here, just to guarantee that we can't uh, lose the place and of course to improve public order. So we need to stop this army coming down from the north. You can see I moved out once again to go and take a look at the Louisiana situation to the west, but we're not going to do that. Instead, I moved just over to the east, keeping my army in the forest in the hope that it might be hidden and the enemy might not know it was there. I get an offer of a trade agreement from the Ottomans. This seems like the perfect trading partner, considering that we both hate the European powers, so we should be a nice pair to work together there. The Louisiana army appears and starts moving directly east, trying to bypass our force, I presume. They raid our trade, and the Iroquois are marching right for our settlements. So now we're in a tiny bit of a predicament. We'll need to try and deal with these situations all at once, ideally. We stand to make quite a lot of money from this trade deal, as you can see there. If we can get that trade secure and not uh, have it be raided by a European power, we'll have enough money to probably raise 10 extra units or so, which will make our military presence in America very domineering with a full stack of Native American warriors. I think we could probably just wipe out most of the colonies around here, uh, at least before they tech up or build large yes. armies of their own. For now, we need to focus on the short term. We've got two armies to fight and one army to fight them with. We've got Europeans and natives, although the European army does have quite a few yes. natives in in it as auxiliaries. So I at first thought I could try defending one of my settlements, but because we've got two right next to each other, if we defend one, the enemy might just attack the other. So there's no guarantees there. Really, we have to make an attack against the enemy to guarantee we're not actually going to lose something this turn. 
I wanted to attack the natives first because they are in a more threatening position and this fight is going to be the harder one so this is the one I want to take with our forces up to full strength. We can't rely on the enemy's bad morale to make them leave this time because their morale will mostly just be the same as ours. This is going to be a straight up brawl. However, you can see the enemy's army composition has a lot of archers and we have melee and cav pretty much a direct counter as long as we can get close enough to build up a regular melee. So this fight will actually be just the same sort of techniques we use against the European powers, but that will have to wait for next time.